not-for-profit and public sector organizations. This topic is the third one in this series where we'll be looking at accounting for contributions. Part three of the handbook allows for two choices for accounting for contributions. These are the restricted fund method and the deferral method. The restricted fund method is used in combination with fund accounting, while the deferral method can be used in combination with the fund method or without using fund accounting at all. Let's take a peek at the first one, restricted fund method. Under the restricted fund method, at least two funds are used, an unrestricted or general operating fund and a restricted fund. If the organization receives endowed funds, then there is usually an unrestricted fund, restricted fund, and an endowment fund. An endowment is a donation of a, uh, typically an amount of money that is to be invested, whereby the principal is never touched, known as the endowment, while the funds, the interest, the dividends earned from the endowment, those can be spent by the organization. So by setting up the endowment fund, you can separate what is the principal, the endowment, and what are the funds that are being generated by the endowment. It gets a little bit trickier because the interest or dividends earned from the endowment may be restricted or unrestricted, and that just depends on the terms of the endowment itself. Okay, circling back. The general fund represents all unrestricted revenue and restricted funds for which there are no other corresponding funds. It is common for an entity to operate at least an operating fund, a capital fund, and an endowment fund. Basic requirements of fund accounting include the following. Unrestricted contributions and investment income that is unrestricted these are included in the general fund as revenues. The restricted contribution funds for which there are <clears throat> uh, restricted contribution funds for which there is a corresponding restricted fund are recognized as revenue for that restricted fund when they occur. Endowment contributions are recognized as revenue in the endowment fund. If a restricted contribution or a restricted investment income is earned for which there is no corresponding fund, it is first, it is, pardon me, recorded as deferred revenue in the general fund and then not subsequently recognized until there is a corresponding item of expense incurred. Let's take a look at a few examples. Let's first assume that this is a not-for-profit, a private, um, Yes, a private not-for-profit using the restricted fund method and that this uh, NFP has three funds, a general, a capital, and an endowment fund. First transaction, transaction A. A donor contributes $500 to the organization without restriction. It may be used for any purpose the organization desires. So how should we account for it? Well, we should first debit cash in the general fund and credit revenue in the general fund, since nothing really happened to suggest otherwise. It's just that other bucket. Next transaction. So assume it's still the same NFP where they're only using, uh, where they are using the restricted fund method with three funds, general, capital, and endowment. In transaction B, a donor contributes $2,000 to the endowment fund with no restrictions on the investment income earned. The only stipulation is that the principal amount cannot be spent, hence the endowment. In the first year, $200 in investment income is generated. How do we account for this? Well, first, we need to reflect in that investment, pardon me, in that endowment fund, an increase due to cash of $2,000 and that there was revenue to that endowment fund of $2,000. Then we have our cash, which is earned from our $200 in investment income, and we have received revenue, which is unrestricted revenue, so we can earn it right away, right in the general fund um, of $200. 
Okay, let's take a look at our other method, the deferral method. Under the deferral method, contributions received are typically recorded as deferred revenues and only recognized as revenue when a matching expense is incurred. However, there are circumstances in which that is not the case. Okay, under the deferral method, unrestricted contributions are recognized as revenue when the amount is received or receivable, as there will never be a matching expense because it's unrestricted. They can do with it as they please and it is received or receivable, therefore we can recognize it as revenue. Okay, now here's where it starts to get a bit trickier and more nuanced. Restricted contributions for future periods are deferred as revenues uh, are received or receivable. They're deferred as a deferred liability until the matching expense occurs. So once that matching expense um, occurs, then you can reverse the deferral by uh, debiting your deferred uh, revenue liability and crediting your revenue. So therefore increasing your revenue when the matching expense occurs. Endowment contributions are simply recognized in the net assets of the organization as there will never be a matching expense as endowments like I said before, by definition, are donated funds for which the principal is to remain untouched. Okay, remember in a previous video how I got pretty excited about the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada? Uh, and that is because of this. On the day that I am recording this, March 28th, 2021, the latest set of published financial statements for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada are the 2019 financial statements. During 2019, this organization changed their accounting policy from the restricted fund method to the deferral method. Because this was a voluntary policy change, they needed to account for this retroactively, which means restating their financial statements and showing the impact of this change in policy, as you can see here clearly in note 15 to the financial statements. If you're curious uh, about the reporting requirements for policy changes, please refer, refer to my video in Intermediate Financial Accounting 2 on accounting changes. But what I love about this example is that we can clearly see that this does, the choice in accounting policy, it does present a different picture to the users, the stakeholders of the NFP in that if we take a look in 2019, it would have looked using their old method that they had zero uh, total revenues and therefore zero excess of revenues over expenses. What the heck were they doing this year? However, if we look to the deferral method, which really focuses on matching those restricted revenues to the uh, required expenses, we see that there was in fact a total revenue of $16.5 million and an excess of revenues over expenses of $248,000. Huh. That is telling quite the different story. Um, and if you take a peek at 2018, you know, the difference between 14.7 and 14.6, not really, you know, going to shake any trees or concern any people. Um, but if you look, take a look at 0 and 0 versus 16.5 and, um, and $250,000, that is absolutely communicating a different story to your stakeholders in the, you know, just intuitively, the financial viability of your not-for-profit not organization. Warren Buffett has called accounting the language of business. I am passionate about teaching and um, demonstrating the language of business because we are telling stories. We are telling stories of organizations uh, throughout the year, where did they start the year, where did they end the year, uh, with hopes to inform the stakeholders, inform people if objectives are being met in for-profit entities. Those objectives are both short-term and long-term financial viability. Uh, as evidenced by the profit and loss statement, looking to maximize profit in today's dollars, as well as you know maintaining the financial health for the future. In not-for-profit organizations, it's more complex in the sense that there may be multiple objectives or ones that are less uh, financially, you know, measurable. 
So how well were boys and girls clubs, you know, supported during the year? Thing is, just because the financial statements maybe don't tell all of the story, uh, they do tell the story about the financial health and presentation of the organization. And just on the onset, the story that's being represented by the revenues that would have been portrayed under the restricted fund method or the deferral method tell a completely different intuitive story just looking at those two numbers alone. So again, accounting does matter. Accounting provides insights in communication and it you know really allows for the portrayal of where we are and where we're going and and to really just communicate what the heck we're doing here. As to whether or not the financial story is the majority of the story or just a part of the story, that really is up to the organization, its purpose, and what the users, its stakeholders, care about the most. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video.